Hi everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is totally terrific that you are here with me today for another Test Tube Tuesday. Today we are going to be talking all about the lungs and you will get to build your own portable lung. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and below each video click the thumbs up. Also, if you really like what we're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. All right, have you ever given much thought to your lungs? So your lungs are organs, they're two sac-like organs that are in your chest and what they do is they remove carbon dioxide from your blood and they provide oxygen to your blood and they make it so that you can breathe. So today we are going to build a lung so that you can see exactly how they work in your body. And this is something that I could show you right now. I have my model, but I think it will be much more fun to build it together and then we'll see how it works together, okay? All right, so in order to build this lung, you will need a few supplies. You will need a plastic cup. This should be clear so you can see through it. And then you will need a large balloon that when the neck is cut off, that's this, this smaller part at the end, when that is cut off, this balloon should be able to stretch around the mouth of your plastic cup. In addition to that, you will need a couple small balloons. These are tiny. So uh, these are water balloons that I'm using, and if you don't have any of these on hand, there's a link below this video to where you can purchase some. Um, in addition to that, you will need two straws, and you will need some modeling clay, and then you will need a pair of scissors and a sharp knife. And of course, anything with a sharp knife also should have some adult supervision and permission. And then I also actually have a couple extra balloons here that I don't need just in case I tear the balloons that I'm using. All right, so let's just jump right in. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to cut a hole in the bottom of our plastic cup. So this can be kind of tricky. So this is where your adult supervision absolutely comes in and maybe even some adult help. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take my sharp knife and I am going to cut a slit in the bottom of this plastic cup. Now I am being very careful and I am making sure that I know where all my fingers are and all parts of my body are before I move this knife through the bottom of the cup. Remember, this is something that you need an adult for. All right, so once you have that slit in the cup, then you can set your knife aside. We won't need that anymore. And then you're going to very carefully insert your scissors into that slit. Now again, this can be a little bit tight and a little bit tricky. So this may be something, again, that you ask an adult for a little bit of help with. All right, let's see. So I am just going to insert my scissors. You know what? I don't think I got my slit big enough. So I'm going to put the knife back in and I am going to make that slit just a little bit bigger. It's good to have your adult help around for a little bit longer sometimes. <laughs> All right, so now I am going to put my scissor blade into that slit. And man, I, I will tell you, I am still having problems with this. Let me go at it from the other way to see if I can just make that hole a little bit bigger to get my scissors in. Hmm. Well, you know, it worked really well for the first, <laughs> for my sample. All right, so I am now, I went in from the other side. I felt like I had a little bit more control and that was a little bit safer. And I was able to kind of twirl my scissors in the slit and then that allowed me to be able to um, make a bigger hole so that then I could come back to the other side and cut a hole. All right, so now I am going to be cutting a hole with my scissors. This is still something that needs a little bit of finagling, and this may still be something that you need some adult help with. That's okay, ask around. I am sure that you can find an adult to help you with this. All right, so what I am doing is I am going to try to cut a hole here that is going to be big enough for my straws to go through together. So about that size of a hole, works well. I hope you can see that. So that size of a hole and then I'm going to try to make sure that it is relatively smooth here at the top. 
Okay, so once I have that done, I can set that aside for just a minute, and then what I am going to do is pull off some of my modeling clay, and I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Sometimes modeling clay can be a little bit stiff and a little bit hard to work with. So I pulled off just a little bit, and then I'm going to make it into a little bit of a snake. Just like that, I'm going to have it ready. And then I am going to put my small, one of my small balloons over my straw, and then I'm going to take this modeling clay and I'm going to go around the top of the balloon and I'm going to connect it to the straw so that no air can get past this clay. All right, so I think that is pretty good. And then I am going to do the same thing with my other small balloon and my straw. So I'm warming up my clay, getting it ready to work with, and then I am going to put my balloon over the straw here, I'll put it on this side just for consistency sake. I don't think it really matters. If you have bendy straws, I don't think it really matters which end you put it on, but I just, I don't know. I liked both of my bends to be down closer to the balloon. All right, so now I am uh, putting the clay around the mouth of the balloon and around the straw so no air can get past that clay. All right, now once I have that done, I am going to take my two straws and I'm going to put them in the underside of the cup and I am going to fish them through that hole so that the balloon and the clay are in the cup when the cup is upside down, just like I've got it here. All right, let's see, I have my straw kind of stuck there. All right, so now it works well. You want to try to keep the small balloons up in the cup. So if you put it down on the table, you want to make sure that the balloons are not touching the table. All right, and now once you have that and you know where it's going to go, then you pull off some more clay, maybe a little bit more clay than you did for the balloons and the straws, and you warm them up, you warm it up. I have two pieces here, that's why I said them. All right, you warm it up, make a snake, and then you are going to put this clay around your straws so that you are making an airtight seal so that you don't have any hole between the straws or between the straws and the cup. So you just kind of move it around until you get it exactly as you want it. And that looks pretty good to me. All right, so now you are going to go to your big balloon and you are going to cut the neck off. So remember I said that was kind of the small part. So I'm going to go down here and cut right about there. And then I am going to stretch this balloon out a little bit. I don't know that it necessarily needs to be stretched, but it seems to me that it works a little bit better at getting it over the mouth of the cup if you kind of stretch it a little. Now I'm going to tell you this is the hardest part of this experiment, <laughs> getting the balloon over the mouth of the cup. This is where another set of hands absolutely will help you. I am going to try to do it without another set of hands, but I guarantee you will have a better go of it if you ask for some help. Oh, and you know what? Look, I accidentally tore my balloon. No worries. Remember how earlier I told you I had an extra couple balloons just in case that happened? Well, good thing, right? Okay, so I'm going to cut my balloon. And let's see, I'm going to cut it just a little bit higher than I did there. So I'll cut it right there. And then I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit. I'm going to try to make sure that my nails don't catch it. I think maybe that's what happened with the other one. My nail caught it and it kind of tore a hole in it. All right. Oh, I have to do the hardest part again now. All right. So remember, it goes over the mouth of the cup. And this is where a second set of hands helps you immensely. Let's see. I think I almost have it. I think I almost have it. Phew! All right. Oops, almost. Okay, there we go. I got it. But you can see a second set of hands would help there a lot. Okay, so now we have our portable lung. So now we get to see it at work. So I am going to hold this up and I will uh, test it and then I'm going to show you on the overhead camera as well. So what you want to do is grab a hold of the bottom part of your balloon that is over the mouth of your cup and then you are going to 
pull it gently. Now you want to be careful not to pull it really hard because then you might actually pull the balloon off the cup and all your hard work would have to be redone. <laughs> all right, but if we pull it gently, and here I'm going to try to show you on the overhead camera, you can see that those small balloons inflate. Do you see that? Here I'm going to move it around a couple different ways so I'm positive that you can see that. This is really, really interesting. I have to say when I initially put this together, I didn't think those balloons would inflate or it didn't seem intuitive to me that those balloons would inflate as I pulled the bottom membrane, this bottom balloon, away from them. I should have asked you what you thought would happen before I showed you what happened, shouldn't I have? Well, I hope that you were able to make a hypothesis even though I forgot to ask you. That's one of the most important things about science, is making a hypothesis, predicting what do you think will happen. Anyway, now you can see that the little balloons, which are, um, which are representative of your lungs, are inflating. Isn't that interesting? Well, the reason that this happens is explained by Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that as pressure on a gas increases, the volume of the gas decreases. So remember, air is always surrounding us and pushing down on us. So when you pull down on the balloon, there's more space for the balloons inside the cup and less pressure on the gases inside them. With less pressure on the gases, the regular air pressure is higher and it forces its way into the balloons inside the cup. And we obviously see this change as the balloons expand. So then how does this translate to your lungs? Well, when you breathe in, you are actually pulling down on your diaphragm and the air pressure forces air into your lungs, which makes your lungs larger. So when we exhale, we push the diaphragm upward, making our lungs smaller. Isn't that interesting? So here you have a model of how your lungs work. Well, I hope that you have had fun learning today about the lungs and learning about Boyle's Law. If you had a chance to make this, I would love to see a picture of yours. Please ask a grown-up to take a picture of yours and put that on our Facebook page. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this one. I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll be doing a Wanderlust Wednesday video. I can't wait to travel around the world with you. But until then, thanks so much for joining me for this one. Thanks so much for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.